what a lovely day and because it's a lovely day I'm wearing this like a very flurry chair guide London by the way I recommend uh, those of you that into you fashion uh, because I've got lovely stuff anyway after the advertisement we need to talk about the classical but we need to talk as well about the success of the Spanish teams in European competition uh, I'm not gonna brag I'm just not gonna uh, say what a brilliant thing it is but I'm gonna try to explain why I think it is uh, I read something very interesting today uh, from uh, Marcelino Garcia Toral the uh, manager of Villarreal in the past and uh, Racing before and now Valencia who's doing so well with them and he only needs one point to actually make it to the Champions League uh, really uh, in, in what it is a very successful season for them now he said that for actually um, when, when at the elite, when the teams are just reaching the last stages of, uh, of European competition, the thing that makes the difference, because they're very balanced, they're very equal, uh, the thing that makes the difference is order and rhythm, uh, the pace in which you do things. And he says that in Germany and in England, the uh, uh, rhythm, the pace is very, very high. The order, not so much. Uh, it doesn't exist so much compared to what he says and I agree with in Spain where you get the order and you get not just uh, a very high rhythm if necessary uh, but also the ability to change that and dominate via changing the rhythm now this is all obviously very general but uh, I will add something else that uh, I was talking this morning as I was having breakfast with um, one of the new coaches that's coming to Beaglesway United uh, a young guy uh, called Emilio Gutierrez who pointed out uh, he's a pro license coach has come from Sevilla and um, will be part of the coaching staff in the first team of Beaglesway United and also run one of the under 18s that we have and he pointed out that uh, you have to add intelligence to it uh, because intelligence is what determines the order, of course, and which pace, which rhythm you have to put into the games. So it all, for those of you that are coaches or think of the game a little bit, I think it makes a lot of sense to see that and explains uh, the constant success in, a, in, a, in more than a decade now of Spanish teams when financially they haven't been able to compete recently with the uh, Premier League in the past uh, when, uh, when Serie A, when the Italians had the money, they also had the pace and the order. Uh, now we have the pace and the order and a little bit of the money in some of the clubs. So it is, in my eyes, the best usage of, um, of your potential that you can see in Europe. Uh, when you have 11 teams have been finalists, Spanish teams have been finalists out of the last 20 in the Europa League or the Champions League, I would say that is, that is why. You have to have other things. You have to have Messi, you have to have Ronaldo. Uh, so you have to attract some of the biggest names. But you also have to have look at some point. And you have to have, as part of that look, referee decisions that help you. Even though, mm, forget the conspiracies, the fact that sometimes referee may mistake. And you have to do have the look in the key moments for that, for that um, error to go in your favour. Manchester City found that uh, that uh, those errors did not go in their favour. Liverpool found that those errors were in their favour. Real Madrid have been helped by those errors as well. But that explains moments. It doesn't explain games. And it doesn't explain a run of seasons in which a league is dominating the rest. The Spanish league is competitive. Uh, and like what many say, just uh, because obviously they haven't analysed it properly. Uh, I'll give you a stat that shows that, uh, because that competitiveness helps everybody. Barcelona and Madrid, of course, to be on their toes and everybody else to get better. Um, before I give you that stat, imagine the Premier League with two Manchester Cities every year. Two Manchester Cities like this year, every year. What will happen? Well, they probably will win most of the leagues, those two Manchester Cities. But also will make everybody better. Uh, and that's what happened with Real Madrid and Barcelona. It's like Manchester City this season. But imagine there's been years where Deportivo, or Valencia, or Atletico Madrid have taken the league as well, when they all was very, very good. So uh, the start I was going to give you is that in the last 15 years, the difference between first and last in the league, in La Liga, sorry, in La Liga, has been closer than in the Premier League. And if you want to look at it in a different way, the difference between fourth top and fourth bottom is tighter in La Liga than in the Premier League. In the last, 
if you only count the last three, four years, perhaps you will see a difference. Uh, I need to check those stats, actually. Uh, you may see a little bit of a difference, but in the last 10, 15 years, which is what gives you a real sample of what the league is like, the Spanish league has been more competitive than the English league. Keep that in mind and maybe we'll explore it in more detail in the future, but um, it's not by chance when you see that uh, there's, me, there's been more finalists in the European competitions in Madrid that it has been in Milan and London being the second and third cities with more finalists. And uh, that's all I wanted to say that, uh, you know, when, when, when you drop, when you throw that idea out there that, uh, you know, one league is not competitive and you do it as a stick and you do it with the idea of, uh, um, you know, hurting the league and the prestige of the league, it's fine. You know, it's banter, but I'm giving you the stats. So um, it's something I would love to discuss uh, more in detail, but um, we'll do it some other time because now it's time to talk about the classical. And the classical is always a game to savor. Now, uh, quite clearly, uh, there's a point gap in the league that suggests to many that uh, you know this is not one of the tightest classicals ever. In fact, I think it's only been seven cases in the history of the league in which the game did not mean anything in terms of winning the, the title. So it's an unusual situation, but there's so many things to fight for here. And now, the, the thing I'm going to say first is that I see three types. Uh, the classic has been lived in three different ways right now. All over the world, it will always be the Barcelona fans <clears throat> against the Real Madrid fans. And when a Classico arrives, it's their moment. It's the moment to say, we are better. No, no, we are better. Look what we're doing in the Champions League. Yeah, but we won the league and the cup. And that discussion will take place on 90 minutes at the no Camp, uh, and will determine who wins that argument, at least for the weekend. And then everybody will uh, have to just continue uh, with their arguments and discussions because that's, that's what football is about. But for 90 minutes, we'll see those discussions that have taken place since December. Uh, every day, all over the world, will be concluded in those 90 minutes. So everybody will watch it. 500 million people are saying they're watching this. Or oh, that's the potential audience. There's another classical, the one lived in Barcelona and Madrid, and it's not very intense. Uh, Having been in Barcelona this week, what I can see is that there is not many people talking about it. There's not many people excited about it. And it's fair enough. Uh, as I said, 15 points difference between both of them. Uh, and you have to dig deeper to find out what is at stake here. And there's a lot at stake. I'm not just saying this. Just uh, listen to me and see if you agree. And that's what I would like you to comment on. Uh, do you think this still is the kind of classical that uh, the players will really be uh, up for, I think, no doubt, that is the case. Uh, doesn't matter what the lineups we are going to be. Iniesta is re ready for the Clásico, for instance. If he's not to start, then it probably will be Coutinho, and then um, the rest will be as expected with Luis Suárez and Messi and Rakitic and Busquets, etc. For Real Madrid, uh, there are players missing. Carvajal, of course, or maybe Lucas Vázquez will play in that position. Um, Casemiro, who didn't start uh, the Champions League game at midweek, will start, I think, instead of uh, Kovacic. And um, Bale will probably start instead of uh, Benzema. And Asensio will take the role of Isco because uh, I still think that Asensio, I think, will play. And this is strong Real Madrid. There's no doubt about it. It's strong Real Madrid still. Now, things they're playing for. Barcelona has never been 18 points away from Real Madrid in the league at the end of a season. One thing. Two, there's a lot of discussion in recent times, in recent months, I would say, perhaps even the last two, three seasons, in which the Champions League six seems a bigger uh, competition than La Liga, or seems more important to win the Champions League than La Liga and the Cup. Obviously, a lot of it comes from the Madrid media who are trying to make it look like that's exactly what's happening. The Champions League is so much bigger. It doesn't matter if you win the League and the Cup. And there is an argument against that. Yes, I can see the glory of winning the Champions League. Everybody can see that. And of course, it's the last game of the season and it's the one with the bigger, uh, the bigger covers and everybody will talk about it all over the world. No doubt about it. And Real Madrid Liverpool, which we'll be talking a lot about and I have a few surprises for you on that. Uh, that is a, a great end of the season. But um, these are words from Pep Guardiola that uh, I spoke to recently for the update of the Pep Guardiola book, which will come out in, in uh, August. And it is very simple. If he's actually telling his kids, if, he, if I'm telling my kids, he was saying, if I'm telling my kids, just work hard every day, 
to be the best you can be, to fulfill your potential. Just give everything uh, in every class, uh, every time you do a little job, just to give everything. And he has the same of his players. Give everything in every training session because that's the way to make you better. Listen to my advice. Listen to the advice of my assistants. Work every day. Now, the consequence of that is winning the league or competing for the league. And uh, that is what gives you uh, the award of uh, non-existing award of the best team in the league, in the sorry not the best team in the league that gives you an award a trophy but the best team in the land the, the team that has prepared better the games that has prepared better be, better every hurdle uh, hurdle along the way every obstacle that is the one that gets rewarded the cup it's obviously an addition and it goes below below the Champions League obviously but. Barcelona feel that they're not being appreciated uh, and recognize their success this season as much as, say, Real Madrid, if they actually manage to get to win another Champions League. Imagine if they don't, though. The argument is, well, if they win the Champions League, will it be as much as winning the Cup and the League? But how about if they don't win it? They'll be maybe third in the League and finalist in the Champions League. Is that enough? I don't think it is. And I'll tell you more, it's not either in the eyes of Zinedine Zidane. He feels he has failed this season. Of course, he's done so well in the Champions League. And of course, uh, players have given him everything he's asked for in the Champions League in different ways. Sometimes playing 4-3-3, sometimes playing 4-4-2, sometimes with Lucas and uh, Asensio, sometimes with Benzema and Cristiano. They've given him what he wants, but not in the league. Zinedine Zidane prepares every training session. He's involved in every training session. He's involved in the preparation of uh, a planning for the season. He's involved with his assistants, talks about every session and every game with everybody, and he's failed. He hasn't managed to get a victory against a top six side in Spain in the Bernabeu. It's a failure. So much so that he thought for a while, I better leave here. Uh, you know, they're not responding to me. As he's seen the response in the Champions League, he feels like he still can do a job. And of course, you know, uh, the amount of success that he's had is extraordinary and deserves to continue. And Real Madrid, who looked around and thought, who is available, actually will wait for Zidane to take his decision. Now they know that he's going to stay. So um, Zinedine Zidane quite clearly feels that he has to increase his learning or take better decisions for next season to make an impact in the league. He said it many times and he means it. The league is important trophy here. But the Champions League is the one that gives you the millions, the players, the excitement, the fans around the world, etc. So uh, it's easy to make an argument to say it's more important than anything, but it's not. But in any case, how brilliant it is to finish the season with that Real Madrid, Liverpool, Liverpool, Real Madrid. And uh, what else from the um, from the classical? Quite clearly, there is, there is matches there that, uh, that will be exciting for everybody. Uh, it's it's interesting to see how players that are young are actually coming through um, and me- becoming regulars in the lineup, like Lucas Vázquez and Asensio in Real Madrid, and not so much in Barcelona. An aging side, one that will will like to change eight players from the squad as a third of the squad in the summer. But it may be a chance for Coutinho to uh, make an impact. I insist he's a forward, he's not a midfielder will take a long while for him to become a midfielder where he makes his impact is as a forward one of the three up front which means that for next season Barcelona needs more midfielders not just Arthur uh, Rakitic will be a year old, older Iniesta is leaving of course Busquets is a year older they need to uh, recycle all that and they're working on it they want two centre midfielders and uh, they want a centre back as well let's see what happens with Umtiti uh, at the moment the conversations are with Barcelona are more fluid than they were before the Roma game and he's not asking for a third uh, for three times more his wages anymore he knows now that if he goes and Man United is still willing to pay the 60 million euros of his bio clause if he goes uh, Lenglet could be his replacement uh, seven years player so Barcelona played that one good I think and um, anyway, there, there, there have to be changes at right back as well. So Sergio Roberto can be more of a midfielder. They need, uh, they need to increase the performances of Dembélé. Uh, I'm hearing, uh, I'm reading people saying that uh, he's going to be left on loan. And why would you do that when he costs so much? And he's got a potential, but he's got loads to learn. Two problems with Dembélé. One, personally, he hasn't adapted to the city yet. He's not open up to a new language, a new culture. Uh, he's got to do that. And two, the... The, what he was doing at Borussia Dortmund, uh, not much order, 
lots of pace, lots of rhythm. Uh, he's got to change that for choosing his rhythm and his pace and increase his knowledge of the order that Barcelona demands. And finally, Valverde, of course, and Zidane would be uh, the other matchup. Uh, we talked a lot about Zidane in case of uh, the time of, uh, in regards of Valverde. Uh, now Barcelona are even thinking of throwing out the, the possibility of him renewing his contract. He's got two plus one with Barcelona, and that third one may be renewed soon. Uh, this is a consequence of somebody very high up at Barcelona speaking out of turn uh, in the morning of the cup final in which he was saying that winning the Cup and the League is not enough or may not be enough for Valverde. The president of Barcelona knows who it is. Everybody knows who it is. Uh, but because it was an anonymous source, we'll leave it at that. But it was very high up at Barcelona. And he shouldn't have said that. Because he doesn't, first of all, he doesn't share uh, the opinion of everybody at the board. Secondly, Valverde has done a great job. A great job. Stayed in the... Stayed in the Steading, steading the uh, ship when it was all complicated at the beginning of the season with the departure of Neymar, the defeat against Real Madrid. Uh, they spoke. He spoke a lot to Messi. Uh, Messi decided to take on, you know, on, on, on his shoulders the responsibility of the team, even as a midfielder at the time when Luis Suarez was not scoring. Then as a forward, he did absolutely everything. He's played in the last two years, 15% more minutes than Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, he has been burned out perhaps at, uh, at the end. Now he needs to rest a little bit more for the World Cup. And Barcelona needs to find other solutions than Messi because Messi is the, team, is, the, is the player that has helped Barcelona to get to seven titles out of ten league titles in the last ten years. Seven. So they've proven to be the best team this decade in, uh, in Spain. But of course, uh, in the last third of the season when you need to be sharp and you need to have other possibilities as well as Messi, uh, Barcelona did not find those, and that's why they fail at Roma. They need to Im increase uh, the quality of the of the side, otherwise uh, Messi will always end up the season like this, and I'm sure he doesn't want to do that. So it's a classical, as I said, that has been playing for many things. Barcelona are unbeaten so far, and Real Madrid could finish that uh, that run in the same way that Zidane finished the run of 39 unbeaten games of Luis Enrique. Actually. Uh, yes, Barcelona beat Real Madrid 3-0 away at the Santiago Bernabéu, but uh, with Zidane is two victories and one draw at the Camp Nou since he arrived. So that's the thing about the classical. Uh, you can do a preview as long as this one, but uh, it gets to a point where the players play, and when the players play, for them, it's about pride. It's about uh, wanting to take those three points that in the case of Barcelona will confirm that they are the best in the land, in the case of Real Madrid will confirm that they can beat anybody and of course it will be like a mini title maybe winning the Champions League and beating Barcelona at the Camp Nou and stopping there and being unbeaten the rest of the season which hasn't happened before so there's a lot of things that, uh, that are at stake here a lot of things, more importantly I think players become little kids those players at Barcelona and Real Madrid they forget they are professionals with their marketing teams, with their uh, marketing strategies, with the big contracts, they forget that when they play Barcelona with a white shirt, it's about beating them. When Barcelona plays Real Madrid, especially at home, but away as well, it's about beating the big rival. So, pride, bragging rights, uh, you know, finishing a, an amazing run of uh, unbeaten games, a lot of things at stake on Sunday night. So, don't miss it, uh, and uh, I will do a video after the game, and uh, I'll share my thoughts with you. Meanwhile, I'll leave you with that. What a sunny, lovely day. I think I'm going to go for a walk. Actually, I'm going to go to see the trials. We, uh, because of United Trials, from underage to under-18s today. That's it. I'll leave you with that. Bye-bye.